Stormvale Castle, once a place of gleaming beauty and royalty, now no more than crumbling ruins, festering corpses, and terrific horrors. Boasting a generous 20,000 square meter size, complete with personal servants, exceptional woodworking, birds with swords on their feet, eldritch horrors, and even a pet lion with swords on its feet. A true marvel to behold, and holy sh! what is that? Let's take it back a step. If you'll remember from last time, I've made my way to Stormvale Castle, killed Margaret the Gatekeeper, and patiently waited for my host to open the door so I can pursue Godric the Grafted. Given that they have Batistas aimed at the front door, I find another way inside instead. However, I suggest not feeding the birds. The first goal is to skirt around the outside, around the outside, finding two trailer park girls that go down without a hitch. Following that, I narrowly avoid being blown to pieces before taking revenge on Mr. Grenady Face. Finding a door, I turn the handle. But someone forgot to pay the electric bill. And suddenly, I'm making a new friend who doesn't seem to understand the concept of personal space. The bright side is that my massive sword Ding. makes quick work of him. Oh yeah, the sword. I forgot about that. So you know how I killed Patches last time for a spear and then used it to kill Margaret? Yeah, so this sword kind of outdamages that by a lot. Bloodhound's Fang, a badass looking great sword from a boss back in Limgrave who loves to flex his mobility. Well now I too get to flex my mobility with some crazy damage complete with a sweet backflip. Where the hell was this when I fought Margaret? You know what, just fuck it, I'm done, that's it, we're out. Anyways, it's back to making my way through the castle, finding some more runes and climbing a ladder. Ah uh, yeah, did I mention birds? Because birds. Seriously, f the birds. After being pecked to death multiple times, I start my descent down the inside of the castle, running into Roger the Sorcerer who has some serious headgear. He gives us a warning about the residents loathing tarnished like ourselves, and asks why we're here. Obviously, I tell him I'm here to kill Godric the Grafted, to which he replies, Are you fucking nuts? Well, clearly I am, so I leave him and his stylish choices behind, making sure to slaughter a knight who ends up causing hell for me later on. <laughs> oh yeah, remember how I mentioned about festering corpses and terrific horrors? Hope your lunch is feeling okay. Since we're taking a trip down memory lane, do you guys remember? Yeah, him. Well, it seems I can't escape my problems forever. And he is back for round two. But remember how I said the sword does damage? Yeah, look at me. I'm the boss now. Around the corner is a fog gate that requires a stone sword key to access, with two red riding hoods inside. Grandma isn't there to save them from the big bad wolf though, and they go down with two foul smacks. My loot is a wooden shield, a dagger called the Misery Cord, and an iron whetstone that allows me to upgrade my Ashes of War with various affixes. Actually, let me quickly explain the Ashes of War. These are abilities you obtain that can be applied to various weapons. The effects range from wind up attacks or multiple slashes, all the way to infusing your weapons with elemental damage, or even better yet, spraying your enemies with blood at the cost of your own HP. While disgusting, it wrecks house. Now would you believe that I get lost for a period of time? I mean, it's not like it's ever happened in Elden Ring before, right? But after getting lost... Right? Right? But like always, life finds a way to spice itself up. Like being killed by birds. Twice. Turns out, fast moving birds against a slow yet stylish massive fuck of sword isn't exactly the best matchup. So I head to the round table hold to upgrade my Uchi Katana and head back to start up my extermination service. Unrequited of course. After ruffling some feathers, I finally find a path forward. You know those moments you walk into a situation and you really wish you hadn't? Yeah, so about that. Despite all the barricades and archers with their bows, and overcompensated crossbows, I make my way forward until they release the house cat on me. Turns out Simba doesn't take kindly to new people. However, on a completely unrelated note, I achieved something Scar couldn't, even with an army of hyenas at his side. <laughs> around the corner is a point of grace, and around the corner from that is a fog gate. Wait, what do you mean Margaret's not even the hardest boss here? But quickly, before I face endless pain and torment, I find the Nefeli Lu, another tarnished warrior like myself, who offers her help in the coming fight ahead. I leave with her offer in mind, and head towards the fog gate. But not before the birds get me one last time. But now, it's time to meet him, face to face.
mighty dragon. Thou art a true born heir. Lend me thy strength, O kindred. Deliver me unto greater heights. Well. Godric, you are indeed a lord of being a little bitch. Godric's great rune is now mine, and with him down and out of the way, the throne room is also mine to claim. On a side note, apparently he was very loved by his subordinates. A quick wander through the halls, and I find the back door that leads me out of the maze that is Stormvale Castle. With the rustle of the trees and the wind in my hair, I take a few steps forward into the beautiful zone of Leonia of the Lakes. However, before my adventure into the swamp, I visit an old, um, friend, we'll call him, who tells me to head to the round table hold and talk to the two fingers. Yes, you heard that correctly. So, with a smack on the bum and one teleport later, I head into the hold to talk to... Oh dear God! Here I meet Enya for the first time, a finger reader. Yes, you also heard that correctly. She tells us that I'm going to be the bestest and greatest tarnish that's ever lived, and that I can be anything I want to be. Okay, she actually said the world's corrupt and everything is fucked and that I need to become Elden Lord for the world to survive. But close enough, right? After being stared down and made uncomfortable by the large extremities in the room, I make my way back to Leonia, say hi to Vsauce, and try charge head first into the first camp I find, leaving a trail of freedoms right behind me. Since the trees are alive for the sound of- I seek refuge on higher land, finding another Evergirl that is host to Adam, Thief of Fire. With an explosive finale, Adam falls and I am released from his arena back into Leonia. I begin the travel towards the academy, which I can see clearly in the distance, where the next challenge lies. But first, a quick stop on these lost firebenders proving who really is the strongest. Nearing the academy, I find the first point of grace in the sunken and crumbled ruins of the academy gate town, finding a map of the surrounding area and resting up for the night. The next day, my first challenge lies before me. Soldiers armed with weapons of every caliber, from the smallest of daggers to literal flamethrower death machines. The US Army would be proud. With a stride in my step, a sword in my hand, and the sheer feeling of determination filling my heart, I ready my weapon and charge straight through them and up to the gate to avoid the battle altogether. Feeling as accomplished as when I dropped out of high school, I march upon the gate that stands upon my way. Nothing can stop me now. 
Wait, what do you mean the gate is locked? What do you mean I need to find the key? Ah, oh, for 